And he goes on to say, John Rich says, and I'll play the full text later this week, a full clip later this weekend on radio and go through it. But he says that this guy comes along in 1830, Darby, teaching this idea of the rapture, our secret rapture. First of all, it's not secret. <laughs> it's going to be wide out in the open when the church is removed. Okay. Now, let me just say to you, don't turn off now if you're saying, well, I don't believe in this rapture. Well, some of you do. You believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. The church will be removed from this world before the tribulation. Some of you believe the church will be removed from this world in the middle of the tribulation. Therefore, you hold to a pre, you have a pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation. So the rapture, the removal of the church before the tribulation, the middle of the tribulation, mid-tribulation rapture. You have some who believe in the pre-wrath, meaning the church will be removed before the wrath of God. I think the whole seven years is involving the wrath of God. Yes, you have the wrath of Antichrist, but it's all because God's allowing and setting this up to happen. So some are pre-trib, some are mid-trib, some are pre-wrath, and some are post-tribulation. They believe the rapture of the church occurs at the end of the tribulation. The church goes through the whole seven-year tribulation, and then they're raptured up and come right back down. Now, I have friends that believe all the above. I don't break fellowship with people over this topic. Now, I try to have a consistent theology and eschatology. Eschatology means end-time belief. I try to have a consistent eschatology and theology for my network, for Worldview Tube. That's right. But I have some guests on my program, which choose not to discuss this, that come on and talk about other things. I know what they believe in their eschatology. I'm still friends with them. I still have them on my programs. Uh, you know, it's, what I'm saying is I don't split fellowship with people over this. But is it a crucial issue? Yes, it is. Now, if you're saying, oh, no, here he goes. He's going to defend the pre-tribulation rapture, which is made up. Well, I'm just going to tell you it's in the text. I'm not teaching this because this is what I uh, want to believe. I'm teaching this because it's what's in the text. So some say he says that that people believe this because they they want to avoid persecution. Look, the people behind the former Iron Curtain, the USSR, great persecution, Cuba today, Muslims killing Christians around the world. Just because you have a certain eschatology you find in the Bible doesn't mean that we're trying to believe in something so that we can sleep better at night. Because guess what? You can believe in the pre-tribulation rapture or removal of the church from the seven-year tribulation and still have incredible persecution. I mean, I'm talking beaten, burned alive, whipped, tortured, horrific Horrific persecutions on this planet have occurred to Christians that would make them think this must be the tribulation. But it wasn't. So just because you believe what the Bible teaches about the removal of the church during this before the seven years, isn't because you're hoping, therefore, by believing it, you're going to escape something. Well, the history of Christianity is persecution. Now, he says that this first came about, this idea of the church being removed before the seven-year tribulation, came about in 1830 by John Darby. No, it didn't. It's in the Bible. It's in, it's in our text tonight. We'll, we'll discuss it. It's in many places. But he also says in the Schofield Bible, who Darby influenced Schofield, comes around in 1909, and that it had study notes, and it was really the first Bible to have study notes. That is not accurate. And this did not come around in 1830. Let me show you what is reality here. Here's what is reality, okay? Here is the Britannica. Everybody knows the Cyclopedia Britannica, right? You have the Geneva Bible, the English translation of the Bible published in Geneva, the New Testament, 1557, Old Testament, 1560. Wow, wait a minute. He just told us the first Bible to come along with study notes, and I didn't play the full clip, but that's what he says, you'll find it online, was the Schofield. No, I'm sorry. There was a Bible known as the Geneva Bible. It had study notes. And its New Testament came out in 1557, and its Old Testament came out in 1560. He's saying 1909. No, it's, there was one before that. But he also says this idea of the pre-tribulation rapture of the church came about in 1830 by John Darby. No, it did not. It did not. By the way, this is again on the Geneva Bible. Look, it says, the Geneva Bible, imported from Europe and not printed in England until 1576, quickly surpassed the great Bible in the public favor. The Geneva Bible was the first Bible in English to add numbered verses. It was also one of the first to include extensive commentary notes. 
But John Rich just told us it was the Schofield Bible in 1909 was the first one to have notes. No, it's not. We can go back to the 1500s and the Geneva Bible. But he also said, as I referenced once already, that this idea of the removal of the church before the seven-year tribulation came about through John Darby in 1830. Wrong. Here we have the Shepherd of Hermas. Okay? Shepherd of Hermas, second century Christian writing. I can show you more of these tonight. I'm only going to give you a couple examples. Second century. Okay? Long before 1830. Second century, second century Christian writing. You can go look it up. Type in Shepherd of Hermas. Go type it in. You'll see. Here we have online early Christian writings, the Shepherd of Hermas, first book. Okay? Chapter two. What do we read? Here's what we read. Second century now. I was met by a beast of such a size that it could destroy peoples, but through the power of the Lamb and his great mercy, I escaped from it. You have escaped from the great tribulation on account of your faith. And because you did not doubt in the presence of such a beast, go therefore and tell the elect of the Lord his mighty deeds and say to them that this beast is a type of the great tribulation that is coming. Wow. Second century. Now, we went back to the Britannica and there's another book called Against Heresies. Against heresies. This one was written by a man known as Iranius. Iranius. Now, this was written about 180. Wait a minute. John Rich just told us this came about through John Darby in 1830. Well, first of all, it's in the Bible, but even against heresies written by Iranius in 180 said this. And therefore, when in the end of the church shall be suddenly caught up from this, it is said, there shall be tribulation, such as not been since the beginning, neither shall be. For this is the last contest of the righteous, in which when they overcome, they are crowned with incorruption. Let's read it again. And therefore, when in the end the church shall, who the church, shall be suddenly caught up from this. There shall be tribulation, such has not been since the beginning, never shall be. But what's been caught up, folks? He says the church. Iranius wrote this in 180. Well, John Rich just told us this is some kind of uh, scam that came around in 1830 by John Darby, who influenced Schofield, who gave us the first Bible with study notes. No, Geneva Bible was out in late 1500s. And no, we find early church fathers going back to 180, second century, first century. I can show you far more than this. But we also have the Bible teaching this. The Lord God himself, the risen Lord. Who cares about all the early church fathers as, as far as the, uh, us needing them to give authority to this idea of the church being removed from this hour of testing, the tribulation? The Lord God himself is giving it to John. Are you going to doubt the Lord? Now, if you don't agree with this theology, this eschatology, I should say, that's fine. You don't have to. I'm just telling you what's in the text. If it wasn't in the text, I wouldn't be trying to teach it to you. I'm just telling you what's in the text. And it's confirmed by Scripture. Scripture interprets Scripture. Scripture confirms Scripture. And through this study, we'll see it and back it up multiple times. But let's get to it. So, I also will keep you, this church of Philadelphia, which is again to all the churches. Remember, it says to all the churches. That's down through the church age. That's you tonight. That's me. We're in the church age. When the church age began, we see it in Acts when the Lord ascended into heaven, he said, I must go so the Comforter can come, the Holy Spirit. The Lord ascends into heaven after the resurrection. And then we have the day of Pentecost. We see it recorded in the book of Acts. And the Holy Spirit indwells believers. Now indwelt by the Holy Spirit, the birth of the New Testament church, the church age. When does it end? With the removal of the church, which we're about to talk about. And then we're in the tribulation period. That's the end of the church age. It's over. And then we refer to those who become believers as what? Saints. Tribulation saints. So here it says to this church of Philadelphia, which is to all the churches down to the church age, which includes us tonight. 
I will keep you from, not I will help you go through, I will keep you from the hour of trial on earth. It's coming on the earth, and it's not just part of the earth, it's the whole earth. Now look at this. David Hawking, who is set at this very desk and taught, says the preposition translated, preposi- excuse me, the preposition translated from, this preposition from, is not the Greek ap, but rather the Greek ek. It's the Greek word ek, meaning out of. So again, I will keep you out of the hour. I'm not going to help you through it. I'm going to keep you out of it. John Wolverd writes, the event in view here that will deliver the true church from the tribulation is the rapture. Which you say, well, the word rapture is not even in the church. Uh, Wait a minute, we'll get there. You don't see the word trinity in the church either, uh, in the Bible either. You know that? The word trinity is not in the Bible. Are you going to deny the trinity? Because it's not in the Bible. But it's taught. The concept is taught. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But do we have a description that we render the word from today, rapture, snatched up, caught up? Absolutely. Harpazo. We'll get to it in a minute. Look at this, though. John Wolver. The event in view here that will deliver the true church from the tribulation is the rapture, which must occur prior to the tribulation for this promise to have its full force. See, this is a promise to the church. What is said emphasizes deliverance from rather than deliverance through. You're going to be removed from the hour of tribulation coming on the whole world. Not, I'm going to help you through it. I'm going to remove you from it, church. Remember now who this is to. Does that mean the Lord is not going to help those who become believers in the tribulation through it? Yeah, he's going to help them through it. We can talk about that as we go through the text. But to the church, he's saying, I'm going to remove you from it. We see that with the way the words are used in the original text. Now, those who disagree, argue it from the text. Argue it from the text, argue it from other scripture, and argue it from the original language. That's all we're doing here, folks, is teaching what's in the text, in the original language, to get the full understanding. Look what it says, 1 Thessalonians 5, 9. 1 Thessalonians 5, 9. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Why would the Lord pour out wrath on the church? which has already been sanctified, set apart for his service. Well, we've already said what is the purpose of the tribulation tonight. It's in part to bring judgment on the world, the scoffers, the mockers, but it's also going to bring to salvation the Jewish people whom he loves, he chastens, and he's going to chasten them, and many of them are going to come to Yeshua Messiah in such a massive number, one can hardly number them, the Jews. 